Hello and welcome to episode two of Jam Sandwich. I'm Alex Watkins. I am Tim Hegan. Hey! Okay, sweet. So, for the intro, I just got to say from last episode that Mahatma is not Gandhi's first name. So Mahatma what? means uh, great soul. So yeah, so it's like a, just a sort of Indian term given to leaders uh, in that place. So his actual name is Mahandas Karamchand Gandhi. There's a little really? bit of trivia for you. Yeah. That's it, man. I think I said that right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you didn't, then you're just digging yourself a deeper hole. Yeah, exactly, which is cool. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, and another little thing we got to say before we start is that I got told that it would be helpful to have in the description links to the songs individually rather than the playlist. So we're just gonna do both. So I'd cool. still keep the playlist because like I'll probably use that. Yeah. If I'm just listening to music, because it'd be cool. But then also do the individual links to songs because then when people listen to it and we go, we're gonna listen to a song, then they can go pause, play the song, and then unpause. Mm. See? Well, it's Making funny it you simple. should mention songs because yeah. I've got one. For Let's us do it to kick straight us away. What are you doing? Uh, I got Father John Misty uh, from the album Fear Fun. Okay, who is that? I've never heard of him. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he sounds well, old. I don't. I don't know much about him apart from that. Uh, I just I just saw him when my mate went to see him in Bristol. Um, well, I didn't see him, but is he fairly? Sort of like underground, you know? Yeah, I think he's he's kind of a bloke with a beard. Sweet. But that album's really good, Fear Fun. Yeah? Yeah, so... Alright, let's give it a listen. Yeah, so the track is... Hollywood Forever, Cemetery Sings. So today we're drinking a wine called Las Tijeras which is from the Moor Valley in Chile. And the grape, I think, I'm not really sure, but I think it's a Carmenere, because that's the mm. only thing I know that sounds like a grape. Yeah. 2013, which, you know, I don't know if the dates mean anything anymore. A vintage. Anymore. Yeah, you know. A vintage, but I don't often drink uh, Chilean wine. What do you think of it? It's good. Like it? Yeah. Uh, what do you get? Let's, uh, let's have a little smell. Seven out of ten. 7 out of 10 from Tim. Okay. Maybe 7.5. Oh, okay. Yeah. Rising it up. So it says it's supposed to be spicy and smoky on the nose. You getting that? Mmm. Definitely smoky. I get the smoky. Yeah, I'd agree with that, you know. For sure. And it's quite bitter, but I quite like that. Mm. And I, I like the smokiness. It's quite good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's rustic. Yeah. It's a rustic I prefer, I prefer a little bit more, like, fruitiness, you know, mm. to the taste. But that's because I have yeah. a sweet tooth. It's sharp. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, that's the wine, so drink up. Other wines are available. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Film review. What yeah. is it? What are we watching? We watched Hannah. Which When's is it from, yeah? When? Yeah. 2011. There you go. See, I get my dates right. Yeah, well done. Yep. Okay, so directed by Joe Wright. Who I'd never heard of before. No, me either. Don't know what he's done since or before, but you know, I think, uh, I think directorially he did a good job on this. What yeah. do you think? Well, I, mean, I don't really know if something's been directed well or not. I tend to pay attention to other things. But okay. yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, the director does such a big job. Yeah. And you don't know how many of the smaller parts of the film he had involvement with. Mm. Like, for example, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, mm. James Gunn, who directed that, he would go in to the individual houses where they were animating Rocket Raccoon and Groot, mm. and actually watch the animators do stuff, and then yeah, say yeah. like, "Now nah, change that." Whereas other directors might be like, "Do whatever you want." Yes, yeah. involved. Yeah, yeah. See what's going on. I just tend to think like, if it's a good film, then I assume that it's been well directed. Yeah, and yeah, if it's yeah. a bad film, then I kind of assume yeah. it's been badly directed. I figure if you if you look at the plot and the script and you say it was a bad film but that script could have been done good, yeah, then bad direction all the way. Mm. So yeah. So let's start off. What did you think of the plot? Remember, no spoilers. I thought the plot Got was really good. Yeah? Yeah. Do you think I thought um 
you've got a little bit of it's very thin on the originality of the plot mm. on a whole it's like a revenge movie which we've had Pretty millions much, yeah. of and there's I won't go into specifics because I don't want to spoil it but there are bits in it you know that have been tackled before mm. in different ways but I think it did it well I think it did it justice you know taking yeah. on something that's that's been done before but having a little bit of a twist yeah at the end of the day it's kind of like an action would you say like an action thriller yeah so you know it has a lot to offer apart from apart from what you might get from having an amazing plot yeah and that's one of those genres where it's really easy to fall into like stereotypes yeah because it's been done so I didn't think before. it was stereotypical no I'll tell you what was stereotypical though what some of the like not main characters but some of the the baddies yeah yeah they, they were they were stereotypical kind of like, yeah especially with the way um, the dialogue Mm. You know, you give the you give the minor baddies like dialogue that's a bit vague. Mm. You know, so that they don't have, so that you can't pick out problems. And I think yeah. that in itself is a problem. They have no like character or personality. They're yeah. just kind of there. That's sort it. Of yeah, yeah. To be defeated. Yeah. Okay, so acting wise, mm. what are you saying? Uh, what's her name? Saoirse Ronan. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Okay. Well, well how did you I was going to ask that because I thought it was like, uh, like said, like Swas. No. Sersha. Sersha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sersha. Sersha. Sersha Rennan. I thought she was really good. Yeah. She's yeah. quite like reserved. Yeah. Like understatement. Yeah. But like, she got a really tricky part to play in the, basically, she has to convey that she's not been in the real world sort of yeah, thing yeah yeah which you know that's a tricky task massively yeah I wonder how old she is in real life dude she's like 20 that's actually the oh, right. right age yeah she's supposed to, like when she's it was when it was filmed what year was it 11 11 11 so she would have been 17 18 yeah yeah is that's that what right. she's meant to be in the film well I saw a figure so you look yeah. at it and you go yeah, yeah I reckon she's about supposed to be that age I, th I think she's she's meant to be younger okay then yeah, maybe a little bit maybe 15 in the yeah, film yeah 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 I mean I, there might be a bit where they say I can't remember mm. you know yeah minor things yeah but um, really because she mentions that she goes like to school and stuff like that ah uh, true yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah that's cool yeah we'll go with that she's a bit yeah. older but not much but yeah so so I think her acting performance was pretty good yeah, you know, and she's got Kate Blanchett and Eric Banner mm. to sort of like be pitted against, and that's quite tricky, you know. They're good actors, and Eric Banner playing a character called Eric. Hey, what, what a revelation! Yeah. What about? I just want to go straight to like the action. Yeah. Mm. So I really liked the fight scenes. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, they were done really well. Like you know how in some in some movies. You, you have like fight scenes these days and like the camera angles and stuff are just done so quickly that you just can't see anything that's going on. Yeah, it's just like yeah, a, big, yeah. a big mess, like a big brawl. Yeah, and sometimes they, they do shaky cam a bit too yeah, much. Yeah. Like, you remember when we saw Elysium? Mm. And it was like, how much can we shake the camera? It's that just going that, mental. Yeah. Shake yeah. factor 11. Yeah, and you know, uh, what, how do you say her name? Sersha. Yeah. Sersha Renner. Okay, you know, she did all of her own stunts. Is she? Yeah, man. How cool is that? Okay. Yeah, and I that's think that's pretty, pretty cool. good because she had some pretty tricky moves to pull yeah, off. Yeah, she was like that. diving over those crates and stuff. Ooh. Those shipping crates. Crazy, man. Yeah. But yeah, so fighting good. Acting Definitely. good. So far it's shaping up well. Uh, what, you want to jump to soundtrack? Because I know yeah. that's one of the primary reasons you chose this film. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was told it was really good, and I, I did think it was really good. There actually uh, there isn't that much music in it. Ah. Because um, when I started watching it, I was kind of waiting for the music to come in. And maybe there's, like, little bits and bobs, but it's at least sort of a good 20 minutes, I reckon, before you actually, there's actually a, a bit of music in there. Like yeah, a, you're right, A big right. bit of music. I mean, do you like... So the soundtrack was done by Chemical Brothers. Yeah. With, do you like was, Chemical Brothers? Oh, with It me. had other people um, influencing it. Ah, okay. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Chemical Brothers. Do you like those guys outside of uh, soundtrack work? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. See, I don't like them. I'm not like massively into them, mm. but I, I reckon they're good. But I think, I, I wouldn't go see them live. I wouldn't like buy an no. album or anything, but I think they did really well as the soundtrack. Mm. And it's the same way that, like, like we were talking about on Primer mm. with the uh, Trent Reznor, sort of like, it's like an industrial sound, but like yeah. this one was more sort of like techno -y. It um, was, yeah. Which was cool, because I think that worked because of the subject matter. Yeah. Because a, a lot of it, um, a lot of, a lot of the music was like fairly similar to what Chemical Brothers would do anyway, but then there was a lot of it which was completely different, where you'd never guess that it was anything to do with Chemical Brothers. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, it was good. But yeah, good soundtrack. So any um any bad points? Uh not in, I mean not really. I mean like I'm not saying it's perfect movie, like it's definitely not, but mm -hmm. there wasn't anything that like stood out as being bad no. about it to me. Or about you. Okay. Well my bad points would be the the stereotypical nature of some of the minor characters. Yeah. That was definitely that that annoyed me when I was watching it. I was like, yeah. seriously, you're going to make him say that? That's like so generic and boring. A little bit more sort of like character development or just a little bit more personality yeah, than just, some of those characters. Just don't give like. your extras the worst lines in the world. Just like, mm. don't use them as just a filler for the yeah. movie. Give them something to say that matters. Um, and also, I don't know if you agree with me on this, but sometimes because they had to forward on a lot of the plot quite quickly mm. and there was a lot of I mean it was shot in so many locations mm. so they were going like jotting about everywhere a lot of the time I felt that some of the dialogue was like spoon feeding you uh, the plot like oh, oh by yeah. the way if you miss this let's just have these guys have a conversation mm. so that we can like make sure no one's lost yeah it was kind of like the opposite of because when we watched Primer we both said that like um the movie is very like unsympathetic towards the viewer in terms of it's your responsibility to know what's going on. Oh yeah, totally. Hannah's yeah. kind of like it's well, a bit it's more like the exact for everyone, episode. I guess. It's a bit yeah. more encompassing of, of a bigger audience. Yeah. Which is good, you know. It's good for like Hollywood and stuff and box office sales. Mm. But yeah, it did annoy me a little bit with the sort of childish nature of that. Oh yeah, so I can actually talk about the VFX now. Oh yeah. Yay! So, mm. I, it's really difficult to talk about the VFX without spoilers. Because you always talk yeah. about specifics, but yeah. I've figured out a, w a way of doing it. Okay. So, the VFX, did you notice any? No. See? I mean, I knew that. That means they were good. Because mm. you don't want, like, if you've got a live action movie with no fantastical elements, like, or, or say no surreal elements yeah like um so no like crazy everything. creatures or yeah. like yeah space stuff like an alien or something. then the whole idea of visual effects is to be seamless and mm. invisible yeah with like the live action so one thing that i mean i was trying to notice if there are any because i knew from the start that there was definitely some mm. um looking at the budget you know it was 30 million dollar mm. movie and they went to yeah. like loads of places around the world there's no way that you can go to that many places with Kate Blanchett and Eric Banner and yeah, still yeah. retain that budget. That's so true. I was like, there was definitely some location replacement shots. Mm. I was sure of that. And then when I looked into it, there's loads, man. I was like, dude. Mm. So yeah, well, I, I'll just say that they were well done because right. obviously yeah. we didn't notice them and stuff. Yeah. Things like being an action movie, a lot of the time they did what I'd call gore enhancements. Mm. So you have fighting and then you just add in like more sort of like explosion y bits or like yeah, you got gunshot wounds and stuff. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the simple thing. Uh, and then a lot of the time a lot of cleaning up was done. So I'll I'll give you one example which doesn't really ruin it. So there's a bit where they're on the snow mm -hmm. and you imagine if a scene happens on snow You've yeah. got to do multiple takes. You're going to tread in the snow. Oh, yeah. And if you see trodden in snow, you'd be like, well, this doesn't look like they've just arrived. This looks yeah, like they've been yeah, here yeah. for ages. So one of the big things that um, the company that did it is called Mr. X, who are based in Toronto and New York. Mm. And so they basically went in and patched up the snow around where they were moving right, to make it look yeah. like it was pristine yeah. before they arrived there. 
And that I thought was really cool, you know? Yeah, that's cool. It's a simple thing that really like made it work. Yeah, yeah. it works. It's kind of essential. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Otherwise you'd be like, oh, I'm noticing how they filmed it now. Yeah. That's rubbish. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Know. I don't really think about those sort of things, do you? Well, mm-hmm. you probably do, but... I think about it all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. fun to pick them out, though. Yeah. I quite like it, because a lot of the time, I'm really rubbish at picking them out. Like, I pick yeah. things that I think were done, and then I'm like, oh, they're actually real. Yeah. And this thing over here that looked really real was fake. Well, that's, so, just, yeah. good. that's just good VFX then, isn't it? Hell yeah. So, yeah, let's uh, let's rate it. Mm. What are you, you going to go for? Uh... Seven point five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna say the same. Seven point five. Oh, okay. So I go for. Yeah. As it's a really enjoyable movie. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. Oh, definitely watch it again. Yeah. Cool. Oh, well, you did watch it again, man. didn't you? That's true. Yeah, I watched it. You twice. watched it again, again. Nerd. Okay. What's next? Oh, it's my song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I got. I've got a bit of info on my band because I thought I'd be I'd, I'd give you a little bit of a, an insight into how they work so it's good we like that I've chosen C2C mm-hmm. which stands for Coops to Cross uh, which and they were, mm-hmm. maybe it's like Coup like French because they are from France mm-hmm. so maybe it's Coup to Cross I don't know confusing right. anyway um, so it's four DJs yeah and two from one band two from another band Combined, mm-hmm. so you've got Atom and Fell from Beat Torrent, and Twenty Sill and Green from Hocus Pocus. So you know, pretty crazy names. And what they do is, right. it's called scratch music. That's what they've defined their yeah. genre as. Yeah. Um, rather than just saying that they're like DJs and they do electronic music, yeah. they've been like it's all about taking previously made samples. Uh, usually quite instrumental or vocal like they don't do a lot of like synth work they record a lot of instruments and then scratch them together yeah and their live stuff okay. is really cool man so you've got the four djs and they have a setup where in front of the tables the turntables are on mm. is like a visualization of leds and so okay. as they scratch yeah they do this thing where shapes and like mouth movements like lip sync just pops up on screen and sort of like goes to the song. So if you've got vocals, yeah, right. it will lip sync, even though the vocals sometimes are like really, really glitchy and jerky. Yeah. Yeah. And then the lip sync goes to it. And if it's if it's a sound, say like uh, a guitar, like a uh, pluck sort of thing, yeah. then it will be a shape that will be assigned to that. And so as they scratch, they've got this crazy like visuals thing going on. Is it is it pre-programmed? Like these these lip no, no, no. I think, stuff you're on. I think it's just um, like it must be linked to the turntable. So that when they right. do it, when they do a certain movement, yeah. then that comes up. I mean, yeah. if it is pre-programmed, then they are sticking to the script really well. But mm. I think it's real time because they do weird yeah. like improv things, and it's, it still yeah. fits. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's them. That's crazy. It must be like, like just the synchronization of four. I know, DJs. man. It's so cool. Like, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Like, they're, they're really, really clever. Yeah. And they've won loads of competitions for it and stuff, which is understandable. So, the song I'm going to play is off that album called Tetra, and it's called Delta. Right. This is uh, just something cool I found this week. Is or it rather, news? A few hours ago. Uh, is it news? Uh, kind of. It's it's new, as in well, it's from November. Okay, that's and news. It's December. So. Yeah, and what it is is cockroach cyborgs. Oh yeah. Right. Are you seeing the little pictures? Cockroach. She's got a little, um, little microchip on the back, and basically. This is a real cockroach. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. It's it's a real cockroach. And basically what what they're doing is using these little cyborgs to find people in like the wreckages of earthquakes and things like that. Really? Yeah, yeah, and and what it is That's is, so cool, man. It's like a microphone array on the on the board uh, which listens listens out for the sounds that you want 
of people like oh. well, the cries of panicked survivors is what so it says so you can just send cockroaches in and if you yeah. hear something you'd be like find the cockroach dig where yeah. it is yeah but it, it no it gets more than that oh yeah because um, well with what you can do with microphone arrays is like pinpoint which direction sound is coming from and then uh, they can alter the the cockroaches movements to go in the direction of the sound what? yeah yeah so what I was trying to find out earlier how well, is, what, is I was, that the what I was trying to find out earlier is how do they make the cockroach move um. in that way and then I've just looked at the picture and, and there's like two the cockroach has got like two little antennae I'm sorry if that's if they're not antennae and they're something else but it's got two antennae and, and then they're connected to these little wires and then they can they obviously send some little pulse down them and then that moves where the cockroach goes and so there's a video of it of this cockroach like going around in a circle and then it, it shows you the move the uh, impulses they send to it like left and right and it, it moves in the direction of the way they're steering it and it moves towards the sound oh, source so cool. they steer it towards the sound source yeah and so they're you know they're trying to use it for to find like earthquake victims and stuff damn real life cyborg yeah man yeah never thought we'd see it eh dude so those cockroaches are like man they don't even know they're being helpful no yeah, they they're don't. saving lives you know how they gave dogs medals in wars and stuff? They're yeah. going to have to start giving cockroaches medals now. Well, yeah. Be like, I mean, hero cockroach award. A cockroach isn't like sort of a fluffy friend like a dog <laughs> is. So. Cockroach, new man's best friend. Yeah, and, the, and there's more. 2014. Because it says, once the biobots... I like that term. That's what they call them. Biobots. Biobots, okay. Have successfully you. aided rescuers in locating survivors... Nobody wants them to be able to run free and continue to chase down the next <laughs> south source of sound. So the team has designed an invisible fencing system that keeps the biobots in a specific zone. In addition to preventing the public panic that would ensue from a roaming band of rogue roach cyborgs, <laughs> keeping the biobots in close proximity of one another allows their devices to connect and so, act as a mobile wireless network. So I take it once these... Biobots have done their job. They can return them home and they keep using the same ones. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, fair do. So they can actually have a career in a career. saving lives. Yeah, these cockroaches. Yeah, yeah. They, do you reckon, do you reckon they start you once on they've saved like eight lives, they get bumped up to like a little cockroach house with a plasma and a swimming pool. Maybe. Yeah, they get. Um, I think they get a Ford Focus as part of their package as well. Yeah, <laughs> mate, they'll be so happy. Yeah, do you reckon they start them off with like, you know, small, small natural disasters and then they move them on to the full earthquake? Yeah, man, definitely. They have to train them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I reckon they got little, I reckon they start them off young though, you know, one day. How long, how long do cockroaches live for? They can't live for I that long. I don't know. But I they can live through anything, can't they? Well, yeah. Well, supposedly. Yeah. Live through a nuclear blast. I mean, obviously they must. Like Twinkies. What? You know Twinkies, those American uh, yeah, sweets. I, no, don't get me wrong, I know what a Twinkie is, but <laughs> why why can a Twinkie survive a nuclear holocaust? I don't know, something about the ingredients. <laughs> they just can. Okay, maybe, well, that's for next week, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or next month, yeah. rather. Oh, at the intro, next, next episode's intro, I'll tell you why Twinkies can survive a nuclear holocaust. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, well done. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty uh pretty well educated on that now, and that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, man. So that takes us to. Uh, I'm gonna do another song straight away. Yeah. I get two in a row. Oh yeah. Let's that's, that's new the right. Yeah. So, next song is the most contrasting thing I could possibly have done to the previous song we just wrote. So it? Beethoven. No, not... Okay, yeah. Uh, that would have been more, wouldn't it? Damn. Okay, well, it's halfway between Beethoven and C2C then. Okay. So it's Cat Stevens, 
Oh, right, yeah. And the song Sitting, which I learned the other day on Rocky Gervais' show that for, you know, for the um, office, was it the office oh. that they used T for the Tillerman on? No, that for the office they use stereophonics. Um, oh yeah, what well, did they use? T for the Tillerman. Was that extras? Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, they used T for the Tillerman on one of them, mm. and then the choice was between sitting and. Oh no, it might have been. What was the stereophonics it was, song? Wasn't it? The on Ricky Gervais, it was a choice between handbags and glad rags, which they ended up using. Yeah, and and Cat and Stevens. That's it, and the song sitting. Oh, right. so that's what it was going to be yeah oh. I remember that yeah and it's such a cool song man it's like the simplest song yeah. like melodically but I like that he's just awesome you want to know something cool about Cap Stevens yeah so in 19 let me get this right 1977 he he was raised as a Catholic and mm. then he had a near death experience where he nearly drowned in um, Miami or somewhere like that Mm -hmm. and basically he came out of it and was like wanted to be more spiritual because he thought that God saved him from drowning because he was like he was praying for it and he says that whilst he was drowning a rogue wave that was stronger than the others pushed him ashore and so like saved him and so he was like Mm. I'm going to be super religious now yeah yeah Um, and he changed his faith from Catholicism to Islam because right. a friend gave him the Quran and his, he read it. His and friend he was gave like, him a pamphlet. His friend basically just goes, oh, you read this Quran? It's uh, quite good. And he goes, oh, no, I haven't, I haven't done that. I might give it a read. Mm. Anyway, he read it and he was like, bloody hell, mate. I love Islam. Switched to it. And now he calls himself Yusuf Islam, which really? I think is a bad idea. Like, putting Yusuf. Islam in your name. Yeah. Bit OTT, is that isn't a it? common thing to do? I don't know, maybe. But you know, he's called Yusuf Islam now, or Yusuf, whatever you want to call him. Mm. Uh, and he's still, I think he's still touring. Like now, he had like a big break mm. from music where he was being all humanitarian and philanthropic and trying to be all charitable, which is really yeah. cool. But I was annoyed because I was like, start making music again. What does it? What does it say on the posters? Cat what Stevens posters? or no um, Yusuf. Yusuf? Yusuf Islam now. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Or maybe it says like Kat, like Yusuf Islam, formerly and then in brackets, formerly known as Cat Stevens, because mm. maybe some people would be like, "Who the hell is that?" Yeah. Anyway, that's enough about him. Now you're educated on him. Let's listen uh-huh. to the song. The quiz. Starring Hooray. Tim Hegan as contestant <laughs> and Alex Watkins as general mastermind mm. of the universe. I'm not acting as a contestant though. I am the genuine contestant. Oh yeah. I don't know what the answers are. Okay. But, but yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, what's the dude off um, Mastermind called? The guy who hosts it. John. Mastermind with John. With John. With John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I'm here. Yeah. So today's quiz is basically I was watching Life Story. Yeah. Oh yeah. And David Attenborough. Uh, yeah, man, classic. And I was like, dude, animals are crazy. Let's look up some more animals, like trivia. Yeah. And so I came up with what we got. I got four questions for you. Uh, and then okay. I, w- I was going to do five because you know you want to round up or down or yeah. whatever, and keep it clean. Yeah. But I got to the fifth one and I was like, I sort of exhausted it. They're a bit boring now. Mm. So instead, I decided I'll just give you like three more facts at the end and be like, boom. Okay. Just like whack them out there. Right. Let's uh, let's see how you get on anyway. And uh, actually, no, I'll tell you what. If you do well, you get the three facts. If you do mm. badly, you only get one fact. Oh. Yeah, so it's up to you. Yeah. The listeners, right, okay. they'll yeah. be like, if you don't get them right, they'll be coming around here with yeah, pitchforks will, yeah. going like, Game off. I right, don't cool, know so. about the African <laughs> land squid. <laughs> yeah, man, he's oh, he's crazy that land squid. <laughs> How does he do it? All right, sweet. So, first question: What is the loudest animal in the world? In the world. In the world. 
Okay. And you've got to think... How are we defining loudest? So, that's I knew you were going to ask that. That's yeah. what I was about to tell you. So, I don't just mean, yeah, like, their screech or, like... Literal, like... Yeah, it can be anything. Like, they could... They're just able to make a really loud noise somehow. Right, okay. Yeah. But their body is doing it. Like, it's not them smashing a gong. Like, gorilla... Oh, yeah, yeah, ...that yeah, has yeah. a gong is the loudest animal in the world. <laughs> it's like... I don't, I don't know, like an ant, but who just happens to own like a 10,000 watt PA system <laughs> yeah. and a he, drum kit. He inherited it from his owner who died, <laughs> and in his will it said, give it to the ant. <laughs> He'll really get some use out of it. <laughs> Alright, so um, your options are yeah. uh, a shrimp, yep. a cricket, mm-hmm. a hawk. Mm-hmm. Which one are you going to go for? Uh, I think I know this. Oh, you do? Yeah, well, cool. I, no, I don't know, but I think I can work it out. Well, you better, otherwise you're not getting the three extras. A shrimp is... Uh, the stuff that under, that's underwater isn't generally that loud. I mean, maybe like a whale or something, but not a shrimp. A hawk, I think you've put that in there to try and be the obvious one. I reckon it's cricket, because crickets are tiny, but if you go somewhere, if you walk around somewhere where there's crickets, they're so loud. Wrong! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what is it, dude? I put the cricket in there to fool you. Oh man! Yeah, man. Because I thought, you know, I was thinking. Well, what is, I it? Got what a is it? It's a shrimp. No. Yeah, man. You want to know why? I got some crazy ass facts on this, yo. So I'm gonna read to you why the shrimp is so loud. All right. So the shrimp can do something called the snap of doom, which sounds awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. The snapping shrimp doesn't sing, chirp, wail, or hoot, but it just might be responsible for the loudest noise produced by any living being. So what they do is, they stun their prey by closing their claws quickly enough to shoot jets of water out at 62 miles an hour, forming this ridiculously low pressure bubble that when it collapses, it makes a mini explosion of 200 decibels. 200 decibels. 200 decibels in a tiny little bubble under the water Jesus. and a shrimp is just snapping its claw. Super quick. How crazy is that, man? Damn. I knew they did that shooty water thing, but yeah. I didn't know that it made a sound that loud. Yeah, man. That, that astounded me. I was like, dude, 200 animals decibels. are crazy. Wow. Yeah, man. It puts us to shame. We've got no crazy powers. Not really. No yeah, rubbish. Just yeah. highly intelligent and capable of crazy well, stuff. Well, highly intelligent, but also kind of like we do sort of start wars with each other and things like We're that. We're too intelligent. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah and the fellas were way debate. better off. All right, give me the next question. <laughs> All right, so next question is... Let's leave that in the past. Yeah, let's not get into that. So that's a zero out of one, just to remind you of your failure. Okay. Which land mammal can jump 15 metres? All right, so is it a capuchin monkey, mm-hmm. a snow leopard, or a kangaroo? 15 metres, like, in a, any direction? Well, it can just jump, yeah, in any direction. Right, okay. Yeah. So 15, 15, 15 metres, if you want to work in feet, is 50 feet. Yeah. Right, I Rack reckon... Because... Um, ca- capuchin monkey... I don't think it's... The Capuchin Monkey, by the way, if you're wondering which one, it's the one that hangs out with Jack Sparrow. Oh, yeah. Right. Nah. And that deals drugs in The Hangover. Yeah. It could... I mean, it could jump 15 metres if it was, like, swinging from a rope, maybe. But I don't reckon something that small could jump 15 metres. No. I reckon, because Greg Rutherford's not that big, and he can jump, like, 8 metres or something. (laughs) You're so I a snow human. leopard, which is which is four which is four legged and is like roughly the size of a human, but bigger maybe. I reckon a snow leopard could jump fifteen meters. Is that is that your answer? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yay. Nice. Good Greg Rutherford logic. Yeah, man. So there you go. So a snow leopard. There's not much to it. I can't tell you any more than that. It can just it can like run and then jump yeah, and yeah. bound fifteen meters. Because that's why I thought like it which was... is, you got to think about that. That's quite like far, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty feet. I mean, I like you know when we jumped off of those cliffs and stuff. Yeah. 
that was, I'd say that was about like 10 metres. Mm. And that felt like a lot. Yeah. So, you know, add another half onto that. I reckon you've got to think about it in terms of like horizontal distance. Though. Yeah, yeah, true. Where it's most impressive. Yes. Yeah. 15 metres. I thought I was going to catch you out with the kangaroo. Because no, they're they, known for jumping. And yeah, I was like, you might think. 50 feet in the air. You don't know how fast they bound. They might be like, Down! Yeah, I suppose so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. There you go. All right. So well done for that one. One out of two. Next one. Uh, the term parrot is a collective term for how many different birds? One. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't had the bloody thing yet. All right. So well, it is one. One isn't even like one of the answers. A parrot. No. <laughs> I just told you it's a collective term for okay. many birds. Right. Okay. So is it a hundred different birds? 225 different birds or 350 different birds. So I guess that's bird species. Okay. Birds. Bird species? Yeah. Oh. So, like, you know, you've oh, got a I hawk. You meant, right, yeah. But yeah, then yeah. you've got, like, a, yeah. loads of different hawk species. Okay, usually with these things, it's more than you think with animals. So you go, you go in for the uh, the game show logic here, just like kind if of. you don't know the answer, you go for the middle one. Yeah. Or if it's like a number, usually they try and fool you with one that you wouldn't expect it to be that crazy. Yeah. For how many? But well, if I may say so, the question is slightly ambiguous because it's just how many birds. Don't blame the question. Species. Hmm. Two two five. No. Oh. What is it? It's not looking good for the bonus questions. Three hundred and fifty. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a lot of bird species, isn't it? I even said, yeah. Yeah, man. There you go. So, you said at the start that like it's the parrot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which everybody thinks it is. Yeah. Mm. But have you heard of a macaw? Yeah. Yeah. That's a parrot. All right. Yeah, man. Macaw. So you've got macaws, uh, lorikeets, lovebirds. Cockatoos and many others are all parrots. Mm. So there you go. Final question, yeah? Yeah. So basically, if you get this question right, I'll give you the three because you've done half. Yeah. If you get it wrong, I'm only telling you one. Okay. Alright, cool. So, uh, dogs have been domesticated for how many years? Mm. Is it 3,000? 14,000 or 33,000? Domesticated. Three. That's quite a big jump between three and 14. Well, and, and it's an equal size. Right, exactly. There's more of a jump between 14 and 33. See, I've been clever. Um, now you've got no way of telling. I mean, 3,000... Who was knocking about back then? Yeah, how good's your knowledge of history? On? What are you thinking was really happening 14,000 years ago? Means I can't really or 33,000 years ago. How long have humans been around for? No idea. As humans? Absolutely no idea. Well, I mean, it, it must be uh, must be about, must be more than 30,000, right? Maybe. It is. I don't know, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Well, I mean, if the answer was 33,000, then they must have been. Yeah, but if the answer's not 33,000, then they might not. <laughs> I'm just trying to catch you up. You're not going to get me. Uh, no, no 3,000. You have 3,000? Yeah. You're wrong. Oh, don't be like that. Mate. Did I say 3,000? I meant... Um... <laughs> you meant 30, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, you're only getting one bonus fact. But I'll give you the best one. But before that, I'll tell you about the dog domestication. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm really annoyed that you didn't get it because if you had a 14 or 33, I would have given you the thing. <sighs> and it's really weird why. So, scientifically, like a proven fact is that we know 14,000 years ago that dogs were definitely domesticated because yeah. they found dogs and humans buried side by side uh, mm. their fossils right next to each other with nothing around which means that they must have been pets or at least worked for humans in, yeah. a, in a sort of domesticated manner now someone found a 33,000 year old 
set of bones yeah. where the dog's uh, sort of skull yeah, is very close to the 14,000 year old dog and closer than its predecessor uh, ancestrally, so what it's evolved from. Mm. And what that leads them to believe is that if it's changed in that way, it may have been due to it being domesticated mm. and it not having to fight different other animals or be wild or other things that that wildness changes about a dog. Mm. Thing is, you can't prove it. It's just speculation. Yeah, so I was going to yeah. give you both. But unfortunately, you went for 3,000, so... Yeah. Uh-uh. Don't get it. So let's see, let's, let's yeah, see yeah. what bonus fact yeah, I'm going to give you. Bonus facts. Okay, right, here you go. So this this is pretty crazy, yeah? Yeah. So the flying snake, yeah? Probably not as technical name, but it's just called flying snake well, in the article that I read. Right, so yeah. the flying snake, yeah? It can glide in the air for 330 feet, and it can even make turns. Like, it can turn in the air. Really? Yeah, how? Like, I literally, it didn't even explain in the article, like, it just said it could do that. Man. It must do, it must have, like, must a rudder really system sort of like or, like... Flat. Yeah. Wait a minute, yeah. it's not just a snake with a parachute, is it? <sighs> Maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's just... 300 what? 330 feet. feet. It's a big distance. Well, what, a, a long? I don't know. Because <laughs> like, if you're just going straight down, I mean, I can go 330 feet downwards if I could jump off a 330 foot. I'll tell you what, yeah. we'll cut this. I'm going to find out because right, I it's really gonna be, want to it's know gonna be a, Yeah. So once thought to be more parachuters than gliders, Recent scientific studies have revealed intricate details about how these limbless tube-shaped creatures turn, no, turn plummeting into piloting. So to prepare for takeoff, a flying snake will slither to the end of a branch, dangle in a J shape, and then propel itself from the branch with the lower half of its body, turn into a sort of S shape, and then flatten to about twice its normal width giving it a sort of gliding property and oh. by undulating back and forth it can make turns so there you go so it sort of slithers wow. to the end of a branch just sort of drops off or propels itself off yeah and then just goes it, man imagine seeing that that's crazy i mean yeah. it's just it's like how does, through, how does that evolve along. you know like that's just crazy Slowly. Like, yeah yeah slithering i mean <laughs> How, it's just like why does it why does it need to fly it's like how is I mean it must be an escape mechanism yeah like maybe it's got a lot of predators where like it's, if something chases it to the end of a branch yeah and it can jump off and then like, maybe it's just one of those anomalies and it's just like, like unnecessary sure. evolution that has just seemed to happen but that that doesn't really happen well I guess it doesn't but there there's probably got to be instances where things have not been actually yeah I, I have no it's, idea because it's uh, specifically it's like a gliding snake which means that it must have used it must use that to yeah, some advantage that. otherwise it wouldn't have yeah. attained that attribute I like you could you could get one gliding snake um, that happened to be able to do it and then oh yeah and that then may have been no anomaly. use and that yeah. would be an anomaly but the fact yeah. that that's they've survived they and do. passed on the genes yeah man it's pretty crazy isn't it yeah, but and also what's weird is like how that that's purely instinctual, like how the snake just goes to the end of the branch and then somehow just knows yeah, to like, jump off. Yeah, yeah. Like and how that, does it know? And that is why animals are mental. Yeah. 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 So concluding the quiz with the uh, the knowledge that we now share of animals being mental. Mm-hmm. Let's go on to the final thing, which is your. Band anecdote oh, yeah. slash song. Oh, yeah. So what were you going to tell me about? Well, just a quick one. Well, not. No, we'll see. Okay, so the Beards are an Australian comedy folk rock band which formed in two thousand and five. The group play music based on the virtues of having a beard. <laughs> uh, the members: Johan Beard Raven, <laughs> John Beardman Jr., <laughs> Nathaniel Beard. And uh, Facey McStublington. 
Really? Yeah. That. Oh I man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing. Which it. one's your favourite name? I think it's got to be Facey McStubblington. Nah, I'm. <laughs> That's I, a ridiculous name. I like Nathaniel Beard because it's just. Because so it's just straighter. mundane. Yeah. It's just Beard, you know. True. True. Okay, so here's some of their albums. I won't read them all because they've got bloody loads of them. How do they manage to write so much material based around beards? Right. The Beards Club. Growing a beard. Beard revolution. A wizard needs a beard. Beard's gone away. Live. <laughs> the tale of the Amish boy and his beard. It only takes a fortnight to grow a decent beard. Oh, it only no. takes a fortnight to grow a decent beard. Right. Uh, and also, all, all their songs are about beards as well. So, um, yeah. I Wait, you're going to give us some song titles? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they they travelled around Europe um, this year. Uh, and their yeah, European tour was called Euro About to Grow a Beard. <laughs> wait, wait. When they do a live show and people turn up without beards, hmm. do, do they try and incorporate that or do they not care? No, I reckon what it is is that just like it's not acceptable. To, you can go without a beard if you want, but you will be frowned upon. You'll be, yeah, and you might be like heckled. Yeah. Like they might pick you out of the audience and be like, I reckon. Why haven't you got a beard? Because, you know, they seem like cool guys. I don't reckon they'd turn you away if you didn't have a beard. No, yeah. They just probably think you're a bit of a... Do you reckon a lot of girls go along to their gigs with uh, fake beard wigs? Hmm. No, because beards are allowed to... Allowed... No. (laughs) Girls are allowed to not have beards. Yeah, but they might want to, like, wear fake beards. Maybe. Just to be cool. They might go because they're, like, they're attracted to people with beards, so they want to find... I tell you what, if you are attracted to people with beards, their gig is probably the best place in the world to go to, apart yeah. from the World Beard and Mustache Championships. Oh, it's funny you should mention the World Beard, oh, beard yeah? and Mustache Championships. Because in 2009, the band travelled to Alaska to, por- to perform at the opening ceremony of the World <laughs> Beard and Mustache Championships. I knew they would have some sort of connection. Yeah. I knew that would happen. <laughs> so, yeah, if you did go to those championships, you'd see them as well. All right, so some of the song names. All the bearded ladies. Got me a beard. You should consider having sex with a bearded man. (laughs) Growing Um, a beard. And the one we're going to play, which is, if your dad doesn't have a beard, you've got two mums. Classic. So that's it. There we go. It's another episode of Jam Sandwich wrapped up. Catch you next time. See you later. Your dad taught you to shave. That wasn't a very...